So I followed Dr. McLaughlin around in the clinic today and he offered one of his patients an arthroplasty, a cervical arthroplasty, and one of his patients an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. And one of my questions was, when do you choose which um, operation to offer a patient? So he is going to discuss that now. All right, so I was asked to talk about the differences between an ACDF and an arthroplasty. So let's take a single level anterior cervical discectomy infusion. So we've got the vertebral bodies here, okay? And they're stacked upon each other like blocks of bone, right? And between them, we have the discs. The disc is the rubbery shock absorber that sits here. And remember behind these vertebral bodies sits the spinal cord right here, okay? That's a gigantic I-95 cable, okay? That's running everything from the brain down to the arms and legs and then the arms and legs back up to the brain. And then behind what we have are the spinous processes here like that. All right, so in an ACDF, typically what happens is somebody has a disc herniation that's pushing in on the spinal cord there, or it's pushing on one of the nerve roots that's coming off the spinal cord, and it's causing pain or dysfunction. So a typical anterior cervical discectomy infusion, what we do is we come in from the front and we would remove this disc, right? We'd remove this disc and we remove this herniation that's pushing on the spinal cord, like so. We take that away, right? And there'd be no disc there. Now, not only would there be no disc, but usually we undercut a little bit here and here. So what you can schematically understand is there's kind of like a, an area there that's totally free now. So now the spinal cord is decompressed, but we can't leave the patient like this because their head would fall forward, their neck would fall forward, this would be collapsed, it's an empty space. So what we need to do is we need to place a spacer in this area, okay, and we can use a number of different products. We can use uh, autologous bone, so we can harvest some bone from the iliac crest, which we do sometimes in, in terms of in, in infections. Or we can use allograft bone, that's bone bank bone, which is structural, which has sort of a rigidity to it that we can put in there. Or we can use some type of a plastic spacer, which is called polyether ether ketone peak, or a metallic titanium type spacer. Any of these spacers will take the place of this and hold up the two bones. And then to solidify that, what we do is we put a little metallic plate over this that has screws which go into the bone and those screws hold the spacer in and the, the patient's bone will grow into the surfaces of this spacer and often sometimes in the middle of it too. So that's a typical anterior cervical discectomy infusion and you can see this is a typical plate that we'll use. So in this particular model you can see that a single level anterior cervical discectomy and fusion was performed and you can see that it makes that segment rigid I can't move that like I can the other joints okay so this is a tried and true gold standard for the treatment of a cervical disc herniation that's refractory to conservative treatment 